If we take a circle, the distance from the center to one edge is known as a radius. You can draw a radius anywhere on the circle as long as it goes from the center to one edge. So this is a radius, this is a radius, and this is also a radius. If instead this line went from one side of the circle to the other, but crucially through the center, we call it a diameter. For this video, you'll need to be able to identify the diameter and the radius of a circle. The diameter is always double the radius. For example, if we had a circle where the radius was 4 cm, the diameter will be double this, so 8 cm. The radius is also half of the diameter. For example, if the diameter of this circle was 20 cm, its radius would be 10 cm. In this video, we're going to find the area and circumference of a circle. We're going to start with the circumference. Imagine we placed a point on the outside of the circle, and then we sent it around the circle and traced out this red path here. The total distance this point has traveled is known as the circumference of the circle. You could think of the circumference as being a special name for the perimeter of a circle. If we take a circle, like this one here, where the blue line is the diameter and the red line is the circumference, and then we unwind the circumference so it forms a straight line like this. An interesting question is how many times longer is the circumference compared to the diameter? Well, if we take a second diameter, it's still not as long as the circumference. If we take a third one, it's almost there. There's just this extra bit here. So to get the length of the circumference of the circle, we need three and a bit diameters. The question is, how much is this extra bit? Well, it has actually been calculated. To get the circumference of a circle, you need 3.141592653589979 diameters. That's also not the end of this number. The digits that we see here are only the beginning. This number will continue on, and on, and on. In fact, this number goes on forever. This number is a very important number in maths and comes up in many places. It's so important it gets its own symbol. To represent this number, we use the Greek letter pi. So we could say that to find the circumference of the circle, we need pi lots of the diameter. We could write that down in a formula. To find the circumference of the circle, we need pi lots of the diameter. Let's have a look at how we can use this formula to find the circumference of a couple of circles. We'll start with this circle here. For this circle, you can see the diameter has been given at 18 centimeters. So for the formula, we do circumference is equal to pi, which is that number that's a bit more than 3, multiplied by the diameter, which is 18. To do this, we're going to need to use a calculator. So I'll show you how we do this now. On this calculator, you'll see the pi button is at the bottom. It's on the shift above the times 10x button. We're going to need to press shift first then, and then we press this button, and you'll notice a pi appears on the screen at the top. Then we just need to press times 18, so times 1, 8, and then we press equals. Notice the calculator says 18 pi. You may want to convert this into a decimal, so we press the SD button, and here we get the decimal answer. I'm also going to show you how to do this on the newer style calculator. So if you have a calculator that looks like this, it's a similar process, but slightly different. You'll notice the pi is in a different place this time, it's above the number seven. So we still start by pressing shift, then seven, and you'll see the pi appears on the screen at the top, and then we press times 18. This also gives us 18 pi. So we need to convert this to a decimal by pressing the format button, and then we press the down arrow, and then we select decimal, and it'll give us the same answer as we had before. So the answer to this question is 56.5486677. An exam question might well ask you to round this off to a certain degree of accuracy. For example, one decimal place. If we rounded this one to one decimal place, it would be 56.5. Now we also need to give units for this. Since the circumference is the distance around the outside of the circle, its units will also be a length, like the diameter. So this one will be in centimeters. Now let's find the circumference of a second circle. So this one here. This time we've only been given the radius at six centimeters. So for the formula, we're going to do circumference equals pi, but then we need to multiply by the diameter, but we've been given the radius. We have a second radius here, which is also six centimeters, so the diameter will be double six, which is 12. So we need to do pi multiplied by 12. Once again, do this on your calculator and you'll get this number here. If we round it off to one decimal place, it will be 37.7 centimeters. We also need to be able to work out the area of a circle. And there's a formula for this too. 
The area is equal to pi multiplied by the radius squared. Notice the difference between the two formulas. The area one has the radius rather than the diameter, and it's also got a squared on it. Let's have a look at how we can find the area of a couple of circles. So for this circle here, we've been given the radius at three. So we do the area equals pi multiplied by the radius, which is three, but we must remember to square it. You can type this straight into your calculator as it is here, and it'll give you this number. If we rounded it to one decimal place, we get 28.3. Now the units this time will be slightly different too. The area is not a length. We usually measure area in centimeter squared or meter squared. So since the radius was in centimeters, the area will be centimeter squared. Let's try a second example. So for this circle here, we've been given the diameter. So we'll do area equals pi multiplied by the radius. Now the radius of this one is not 30, that's the diameter. If you half 30, you'll get 15. So each radius here will be 15 meters. So it's times 15, and don't forget the squared. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this number here, which if we round off gives you 706.9. Once again, we need to give the units and it will be something squared. Since the radius of this one was in meters, its area will be meters squared and not centimeters squared. Now let's have a look at a question where we need to work out both the area and circumference. So for this question, it says work out the area and circumference and give your answers to one decimal place. You might want to use this question to check your understanding so far. Feel free to pause the video and give it a try yourself and then play again to check the answers. So we'll start with the area for this circle. It's pi multiplied by the radius squared. Now we've been given the diameter and this one is 16, so we need to half that to get eight. So it's multiplied by eight squared. Typing this into your calculator will give 201.0619298, which if we round to one decimal place like it says in the question, would be 201.1. And don't forget the units, this one will be centimeters squared. And now for the circumference, we do pi multiplied by the diameter, which is the number given on the circle, 16. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this number here. If we round it off to one decimal place like it says in the question, we get 50.3. And don't forget the units, centimeters, not centimeter squared this time. Sometimes this type of question could appear on paper one where we don't have a calculator. It might look like this. Work out the area and circumference. Give your answers in terms of pi. When a question says to give your answers in terms of pi, you almost certainly won't be allowed a calculator. Let's have a look at how we would do this question now. So we'll start with the area. Area equals pi, and then we multiply by the radius, so 10, and then squared. Now ordinarily at this point, we'd reach for the calculator and type this in, but we can't because this one's in terms of pi and we don't have a calculator. What we're going to do is write this out once more, so area equals pi, and then we're actually going to do 10 squared. 10 squared means 10 times 10, and 10 times 10 is 100. So this is just the same as pi times 100. When you multiply pi by 100, you could write this as 100 pi. It's important that the pi comes after the 100. You certainly wouldn't be able to write pi 100, even though that's the order it's in in the calculation. The answer to this question would be 100 pi. Let's also look at how we would do the circumference. So the circumference equals pi multiplied by the diameter. In this one, the diameter is 20, so it's pi times 20. And this is simply 20 pi. And that's the answer. In some ways, giving your answer in terms of pi is actually easier than when we do it as a decimal. Next, we're going to look at what happens if you're given a semicircle or a quarter circle. We'll start by finding the areas of these shapes. So for the semicircle at the top, we're going to pretend for a moment that it was a full circle. So if it were a full circle, we could find its area by doing pi times radius squared. So it would be pi multiplied by the radius now in this one, we've been given the diameter at 12, so the radius is half of that, which is six. So pi times six squared. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this number here. So the area of the full circle, if it were a full circle, would be this number. But we would need two of these semicircles to make a full circle. So we've only got half of the area. So if we half the area of the full circle, we'll find the area of the semicircle. So we take this number, 113.097 and so on, and divide it by two. And that gives you this number here. So the area of the semicircle is 56.548667776.
This question says to round it to one decimal place, so it'd be 56.5, and the unit centimeter squared since its area. Now what about the quarter circle underneath? We'll do the same idea. We'll pretend for a moment it's a full circle. If it were a full circle, we'd find its area by doing pi times the radius squared, so times 10 squared, which would give you this number here. But this isn't a full circle, it's a quarter circle. We would need four of these to go together to make a full circle. So we've got one quarter of the area. So we'll divide this area by four. That will give you this number here, which rounds to one decimal place at 78.5. So to find the area of a semicircle or a quarter circle, find the area of the full circle and divide it by two or by four. What about instead if the question said to work out the perimeter of these shapes? Notice I've used the word perimeter and not circumference. The word circumference is used specifically if it's a full circle, but these shapes are semicircles and quarter circles. We'll start with the semicircle. The perimeter of this shape is in two pieces. We have a straight piece along here, and then this curved piece along here. We know how long the straight piece is, that's 12, so we just need to do the curved piece, which is marked in green. The curved piece is half of the circumference of the circle. So we'll do the normal circumference of the full circle, which is pi, multiplied by the diameter, which is 12, and that gives you this number here. So that would be the circumference of a full circle, but we only want half of that, so we divide this by two, which gives you this number here. So the length of the green line here is 18.8 .8 and so on. So to find the perimeter of the whole shape, we just add together all of the lengths. We've got 18.8 .8 and so on for the green part, and then 12 for the red part. If you add those together, you get 30.8 centimeters. And that's the answer to this question. For the quarter circle, it's made up in three pieces. We have this straight one here, this straight one here, and this curved one here. Now we've got one of the straight ones at 10, and the other straight one is also 10 since it's a radius of the circle. We just need to work out the curved one that's in purple. We're going to start by working out the circumference of the whole circle. So we do pi times the diameter, and the diameter of this one is 20, which gives you this number here. Now that would be the circumference of the full circle, but we don't have a full circle, we have a quarter circle. So this purple part will be a quarter of the circumference. So we divide this by four. If you divide this by four, you get this number here. So we found that the length of the purple line here is 15.7 and so on. So to find the perimeter of the entire shape, we would add together 15.7 and so on, and the two 10 centimeter lines, and that gives you this is the answer, 35.7 centimeters. Now you could also be asked to do both of these skills without a calculator again. So if we take this semicircle here, we're going to work out the area and the perimeter of it, but we need to give the answers in terms of pi. When it says to do it in terms of pi, remember we won't have a calculator. Let's start with the area. So to do the area, we'll do the formula of the whole circle, pi times the radius squared. The radius of this one is four, so pi times four squared. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. So we have pi times 16, which is 16 pi. Now that would be the area of the entire circle, but this one's a semicircle, so we only want half of the area. So we can half this. 16 pi divided by 2 is just 8 pi. And that's the answer to the question. We just need to pop some units on centimeters squared. What about the perimeter then? Well, the perimeter is made up of two sections like before. We have this straight part along here, and this curved part here. We know the straight part is eight centimeters, so we just need the curved part, which is half of the circumference of the circle. So let's work out the circumference of the circle using the formula pi multiplied by the diameter, which is eight. And pi times eight is just eight pi. Now we don't want the whole circumference, we only want half of it since this is a semicircle, so we divide this by two. Eight pi divided by two is four pi. This tells us the length of this green line here is four pi. All we need to do now is add this four pi to the straight section, which is eight, and we get four pi plus eight. Now, some people might be tempted to add these two together and try and get 12 pi, but you can't add four pi and eight together because the four has a pi, but the eight doesn't. If it was four pi plus eight pi, that would be 12 pi. But this one can't be simplified any further. The answer is simply four pi plus eight as long as we pop the units on, which are centimeters. Sometimes circles appear in worded exam questions, like this one here. Katie makes circular cakes with a diameter of 22 centimeters. 
she puts a decorative ribbon around the outside of each cake. Her roll of decorative ribbon is 60 meters long. And we need to work out how many cakes she can put a ribbon on using this roll. So in this question, we've got circular cakes that have a diameter of 22 centimeters. Let's do a quick sketch of what that looks like. We're told that she's going to put this ribbon around the outside of each cake. The outside of this cake is the circumference of the circle. So let's work out the circumference. The circumference of this circle would be pi, multiplied by the diameter, which is 22, which gives you this number here. Now she has a roll of ribbon that's 60 meters long. And that's given in meters and not centimeters, so it'll make sense for us to convert that into centimeters. To convert that to centimeters, we multiply it by 100, which gives you 6,000 centimeters. So Katie has 6,000 centimeters of ribbon available, and each cake needs 69.11503838 centimeters. So to work out how many cakes she can fit this round, we're going to divide 6,000 by 69.11 and so on. If you do this with your calculator, you'll get this number here. This tells us that Katie can fit the ribbon around 86.8117871 cakes. Now obviously she can't make 86.8117871 cakes, that doesn't make any sense. She doesn't have enough ribbon for 87 cakes because this number is slightly lower than 87. So the answer we would give for this one is 86 cakes. Let's have a look at another example. So in this question here, an artist is painting a large circle on a wall. The circle has a radius of 4.5 meters. Each tin of paint covers 25 meters squared of the wall. Work out how many tins of paint the artist needs to paint the circle, including the inside. In this question, we're told the circle has a radius of 4.5 meters. So let's do a sketch of what the circle looks like. And since we're painting the inside of the circle, we're looking at the area of the circle rather than the circumference this time. So let's work out the area of the circle. It's pi multiplied by the radius squared, so 4.5 squared. That means the area that we need to paint is 63.61725124 meters squared. Now we're trying to work out how many tins of paint the artist needs in this question, and we're told that each tin of paint covers 25 square meters of the wall. So we just need to divide the area that we want, 63.61 and so on, by 25. This gives you 2.544690049 tins of paint. Now of course you can't go into a shop and buy 2.544 and so on tins of paint, that doesn't make any sense. We could buy two tins or three tins. Two tins wouldn't be enough though, because we need more than two tins. So in this situation we would buy three tins of paint. And that's the answer to the question. Now we're going to look at one more question, where we have this diagram here, and we need to work out the area of the shaded region, giving the answer in terms of pi. These types of questions are quite common in paper one. The first thing to notice in this question is that the outer shape must be a square. Since we have two circles joined together horizontally and two circles joined together vertically, they must be the same length. So this length here must also be 20 centimeters. We can work out the area of the square just by multiplying its base by its height. So 20 times 20, which is 400. This would give us the area of the entire square, but we need to subtract the area of the circles to get the shaded region. So let's work out the area of the circles. If the width of the square is 20 centimeters and there are two circles here, the diameter of one of those circles must be half of this, so 10. And the radius must be half of this, so five. So we know the radius of each circle is five, so we can work out its area now. The area of each circle is pi times five squared. And we're doing this one in terms of pi, remember? So we'll do five squared, which is 25. So it's 25 pi. So that's the area of each of the circles. However, there are four of them. So the area of all four circles will be 25 pi multiplied by four, which is 100 pi. To calculate the area of the shaded region, we do the area of the square, which was 400, and then we subtract from this the area of the circles, which is 100 pi. So the answer for the shaded region is 400 subtract 100 pi centimeters squared. Just like before, since the 400 doesn't have a pi on it, we wouldn't do 400 subtract 100. This is the answer to the question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions on this topic that are in this video's description.